finger up to his lips, and he's like, don't tell anyone. I was like, wait, whatever. Gotta make Why? friends. Why? Why everybody knows where it is. And so you're telling everyone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want everybody to have it. <laughs> okay, so now we're getting into the airing dirty laundry part of the expedition. I see how it is. Oh, no. Oh. No, we're not going there. Oh, speaking oh. of dressing. Okay. I don't okay. have any okay. dirty laundry. I just did mine today. Hey. Hey. Well done, bro. Hey. Nice. So this, is, all, nice. this nice. is all topic right here. So, Miku Kui. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we zoom in. We, uh, we had a debate about chicken wings, hot chicken wings. I think some of y'all heard it, but... <laughs> <laughs> mayonnaise. Yes, mayonnaise. Would you put mayonnaise, would you put mayonnaise on your hot wings? Uh, exactly. Oh, Nobody yeah. wants mayonnaise no, with no, their would hot you, wings. Would you dip hot, hot wings into mayonnaise? Nobody wants that, Zach. <laughs> See, look at that. No. Okay, 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 but me and Mahina agree <laughs> that you can put mayonnaise if you don't have ranch dressing on your chicken wings. It's oh, perfectly fine. No. It's oh, perfectly wait, fine. I'm sorry. You're saying mayonnaise is yeah, a replacement even for Zach, ranch? Even Zach tried, and he was like, it's pretty okay. That, that is pretty okay. Okay. You can't yeah. even taste it, so I, I told you outright. Ranch. no world in which that is a replacement for <laughs> yeah, ranch. Ranch dressing is way better oh, than mayo. That is, oh. it's a, uh, uh, you have to add it with something. So in my oh, case, no. at lunch, you have to put hot sauce or sriracha, <laughs> oh, yeah, and then the you man. stir it, mm. and you then it becomes an aioli. Yes. Okay. Aioli sauce. sauce. If there you like it, mayo and sriracha, that's a sauce. <laughs> mayo? No. No. Mayo just is a straight. sauce. Mayo, much like <laughs> onions, do not belong in food. What? <laughs> oh, oh, Dr. Bell <laughs> took her stand. No, okay. Strong you, opinions. You have some she wouldn't mind a little. She wouldn't mind a little rock crumbles in her food. <laughs> Manganese crust? Manganese okay. Right. <laughs> no, no manganese crust in food either. It's bad for you. Oh, oh we're too oh, much. We're about to get into too much trouble. Uh, we're too much. Because <laughs> <Okay, yeah. laughs> I'm just waiting for the chats to roll in. <laughs> Yeah, chat, what do you uh, the, think? The, inter chat, the yeah. internet actually wants to know what's going on here on the seafloor, but believe me, <laughs> <it or not. laughs> all, of our, all of our viewers at home. Okay, who failed to take a nap today? Yeah. <laughs> I took a nap. <laughs> See, you're smart. Mm -hmm. I Thank took you. a very long nap today, actually. You what? I took a very long nap today. Good. Yeah, I heard no. your alarm going off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Okay. We, well. we have a friend all the way from Florida wondering <laughs> if he's a uh, beautiful description, by the way, translucent, ethereal, fluffy strings extending Ooh. from the seafloor are called siphonophores. Uh, I don't believe so. I think those were actually coral species, but they, they might have been sponges. Not exactly sure what they're looking at, but did anyone see oh, some siphonophores? Oh, maybe it's the Walteria sponges. Oh, could be. Those could, could be, be white, kind of translucent strings that are... We, yeah. could, we might describe them that way. You're yeah, right. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll zoom in on one soon. Or uh, well, yeah. were the they talking about the, that tinofor that they saw on the 12 to 4 watch with the oh. really long mm. filaments? Oh, they just asked the question, but oh, they could okay, have okay. been talking about that for sure. Yeah, I don't, you mm. know, friends in Florida, who knows? But uh, we're, we appreciate you viewing and bringing us back on topic. <laughs> uh, for a little while, at least. <laughs> 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 for a couple of minutes. And uh, yeah, for anybody who likes rocks, um, yeah, we were uh, going through a little bit, of a, little bit of a rubble field and now we're back into lava flows, uh, getting somewhere between uh, pillow to uh, lobate texture. So some of these look uh, like they're a little bit coalesced, but some others are forming very distinctive uh, uh, pillow formations here, so. Okay. In case you're wondering how pillow basalts got their name, this is a pretty good example. Well, it does look kind of comfy down there. More or less. I could lay my head down. Mm -hmm. Kukui, Kukui, we got, uh, Kukui did go to college in Hilo and uh, spent some time in Hilo and, and mayo is a thing. You know you know you live in Hilo if uh, mayo is a dipping sauce. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of yeah, true. Yeah, if you classify true, that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Love that, you, Tito, but no. Yeah. You know that is also very true of uh, parts of the Midwest. Yeah. Yeah. Mayo is a very big thing there. Yeah. Ranch I, I don't understand. more so though. Yes, ranch is even more so. Ranch I get. Mayo I don't. I'm sorry, it's I when don't. You run out of ranch and you have you have <laughs> mayo. That's when you use it. In what world That's a good would you point. ever run you know out of ranch what? though? You I know, just right? did this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap, that's our world. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I encourage Zach to try it. <laughs> to be fair, we don't have ranch. Yeah. yeah, we don't. Yeah. Which, I mean, we ooh. have Italian dressing, 
Apparently. <laughs> Somewhere. Hidden. Somewhere. Hidden away. It's hidden. Yeah. So I'm not going to tell anyone where it's at. I know where it's at. I'm not going to tell anyone. You'll see me post another result. But now we can just ask you for it, right? I don't know. Right. You have to look at That's Alex for it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's Although, not like it's a secret at this point, because there are people watching. <laughs> knows how to make ranch from memory, from scratch. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the ephemeral thing they were talking about? Yeah. Could be. So, I was Could like, be. what was it? Buttermilk, a little bit of flour, black pepper, garlic, onion powder. Uh, what else was there? I forgot. I remember having a brain fart. Black oh, and that's wow. a beautiful yeah. bamboo, yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 Back on the It's got a shrimp <laughs> thing. Yeah, look at the shrimp. <laughs> Oh, oh so right. I should have awesome. uh, a great in. little unbranched bamboo with some uh, shrimp associate. I think that may be mm, maybe a libius. What did I you say? Be, what you, and the target shrimp that we that we collected, I think a couple Oh, of but we already now. collected? Yeah. yeah. Great. I think uh, it might be. It's a small one, though. So small. Yeah. It is small. So tiny. We found so many mothers, yeah, brooding mothers. We did, we yeah, on those Chrysler Gorges uh, at the That's beginning great. of the cruise. Yeah, that was really interesting. Yeah. We have uh, friends tuning in from El Paso, Texas. I, my family, the Lucero family, goes back a long time in Las Cruces, New Mexico, El Paso, Texas, northern Mexico. So aloha and uh, hola to all of you. And, uh, yeah, hope, hope you're doing well. We've also got some folks turning in, tuning in from Nolens. Ooh. And uh, so Catalina's hometown. And yeah. so, yeah, welcome from from New Orleans. We uh, are glad to have so many people from so many different places. Yeah, shout out to the El Paso folks. Uh, I lived there for about two and a half years and absolutely nice. loved it. All right. Awesome. Really, Dr. Val. Good music scene, great food. Ooh. That Las Cruces Farmer's Market is on point. Farmers markets. I was thinking right. that's what I miss about home. Oh, I was Mina thinking that. Farmers, I was yeah. <laughs> we should do a little mock farmers market with like our canned vegetables. What are we? Yeah. Yeah. What, are we what are we? What are we Gold bringing? Fish. Mayonnaise. Gold fish. Whatever's in the kitchen. Yeah. Mayonnaise Oreos. and hot wings. Yeah. <laughs> Oreos crackers. with mayonnaise. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? Okay. Actually, okay. we could like barter with the, the few down. snacks that we have left I that we all brought on individually. We can just barter with each other. Like I've got some dark chocolate covered blueberries. Anyone have? Have any, uh, you know, trail mix, trail mix, <laughs> or uh, potato chips? Mix. Oh my goodness! Oh. Yeah. I got root beers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> how many? Uh, Last cruise I was on, near on like the transit back, where we got like three days or so, we did like a snack fest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Got left. <laughs> well, that's great. It's all about sharing when we're almost home. Yeah. <laughs> when we're still out here, it's a whole nother story. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's also great about El Paso? So much cool geology. Nice. <laughs> the rocks. How, how, we could have guessed. <laughs> you can p pretty much pick any direction out of El Paso, and you find some of the coolest stuff. I love it. Including mantle xenoliths. So there, there is a little volcanic field about 45 minutes out of um, uh, El Paso, uh, just over in New Mexico and pretty close to the Mexican border. There's yeah. uh, some, uh, you know, a couple of a couple of bigger cones built up, some little cinder cones, and then uh, what are called mar volcanoes, which are uh, uh, basically these holes blown out of the ground by the interaction of magma and water. And one of them is uh, uh, was was powerful enough to bring up uh, little pieces of Earth's uppermost mantle, and you can find these green rocks that uh, around there that mm -hmm. fall apart pretty easily. Yeah, those are those are xenoliths. They're um, they're what? They're xenoliths, xenoliths. 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 Uh, which is uh, which translates basically to um, alien rock. Xenoliths. Oh, yeah. Wow. So yeah, and they they come that's from where uh, the aliens landed they come from first. below the crust and they tap into the upper lithospheric mantle, and uh, I, they just, I don't they just know like, that they just like get blown up from they there. They just get yeeted out. Yeah, yeeted oh. they literally get yeeted <laughs> out. <laughs> you got it. Whoa. Yeah, they're they're really green. They're mostly like olivine, a little bit of pyroxene, and they're 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 cool. They're I've very cool. I've been down there. I've been down there, Doctor Vell. It's I'm trying to find it on the map because uh, it's kind of like nowhere. Yeah, it's out in the middle of nowhere. So I think but I think uh, on that map it's like kind of below ish Highway oh, Eleven. In front of us. I can find it on a topo map. I can't find it on a political map. <laughs> Oh, Actually, that might be it there. No, uh, no, that's not it. Actually, we can name an anemone. Hmm. If you look up the Patrios. Yeah. Oh, it's been a hot minute since I've looked in that part of the world.
Yeah, beautiful part of the world to explore. Um, yeah, so so amazing. I need to get back. Yeah. It's been too long. I haven't been there in a few years either. So it's it's a pretty cool place. All right. But yeah, the Hilo Farmer's Market is pretty awesome, too. Mm -hmm. Hawaii does have great farmer's markets. They sure do. I agree. Mm -hmm. I just want to give a shout out to also the Upcountry Farmer's Market, too. Up hey, at Upcountry and Kula. Kula, yeah. Um, actually, yeah, and I agree with all the local farmer's markets across Hawaii um, with small local businesses, mm -hmm. fresh produce. So support local. Hey. Yes, all. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Wherever you definitely. are. Definitely. Yeah. Local. Yeah. I, I really do love that. Whenever we're able to go travel and just checking out their markets, their open markets, mm -hmm. like all of the vendors. I mean, it's amazing. Just so many great options. Here you go, Dan. Doctor, yeah. Oh, there That's it is. That's Kilburn Hole right there. Yeah. This is the whole Patrios field. Yep. I have been. It's been a long time. Yeah. We have a we have a question coming in from uh, Las Cruces, El Paso. Oh, we have a Brazilian. Wondering, farmers. red or green? Green. <laughs> green chilies. Yeah, my family is chili farmers, so uh, wow. and, and we definitely definitely prefer green chilies. But we can start fights out in that part of the. Oh yeah. That part of the world. <laughs> uh, hey, you can't decide. Go Christmas style, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, can. But you know, some people might call you a traitor. But <laughs> It's, uh, you have no direction in life if you uh, can't decide between red or green. Uh, what kind of chilies you like? But. There's, oh. um, in my previous workplace, there they grew a chili pepper tree. So nice. it turned green and then it'll like transcend into red, like the more ripe it got. Uh -huh. So you can have both. You can mm -hmm. have both, yeah. You can't decide, you can have both. Beautiful. Uh, I'm a big fan of hatch chilies. Oh, that's a beautiful brzinket. Wow. Brzinket. Especially when it's like harvest season and they start roasting them. And I swear, anywhere you are between Las Cruces and El Paso, you can just smell the roasting chili in the air. Oh, so delicious. Mmm. That looks like a polycute worm, like right below it, too. Oh, really? That uh, really small blob. Oh, that, oh yeah. yeah it's sure enough. Yeah. Oh, what? That was a good spot. No, polychaete. Oh. oh. Actually, I, I, I think don't there's know another one right there. I, I might have misspoken. Um, it's some sort of critter. Yeah. Could it be a tiny nudie? Ooh. <laughs> I've never seen a tiny nudie before. But I might be able to nudie. see some segmentation on it, but I'm not positive. Do you see bristles on it by any chance? It's very difficult to see. That yeah, might be what I'm seeing, nudie. actually. That's everything. Yeah. For those viewers online, we're we're looking just below the base of this brisingid. Is a brisingid uh, a kinoderm? Is yes. it a star? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. So uh, this is a brisingid. It's a kind of star, um, and we're looking just below it at very very small creatures moving about on the rock. Thought it could be a worm. Maybe you thought we might have seen some segmentation in it. What's that? Oh, tardigrade, yeah. a giant tardigrade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Moving on. Thank awesome. you, thank you. Time to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I get excited about polychaetes. <laughs> As That's one awesome. Everybody should have multiple things in their lives that they get excited about. Yes. I don't care. I don't care what they are as long as they're not hurting anybody else. Yeah. yeah. And polychaetes are pretty cool. I agree. I agree. Also, I like the word polychaet, <laughs> but I'm easy to please. I mean, I like rocks, so, you know. <laughs> it's another bamboo, yeah? Yes, yeah, another uh, unbranched bamboo on top of some of these uh, rocks which look like broken up, what, sheet flow? Possibly, what do you think we're looking at? A lot of them are kind of like rounded and a little pancakey, which kind of has me thinking like just large manganese nodules maybe. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah sometimes oh, sometimes like, when you like cut up in here. 
Um, yeah, maybe that, maybe down here too. Cause sometimes you get like manganese nodules about yay big and they, they, they kind of look like um, a really thick pancake. A really thick pancake, excellent. Okay, maybe yeah. maybe like a loaf of bread or something. Like think think like a nice artisan sourdough bread. Mm. And you, and you, <laughs> you have already on food and it's only the start of watch. <laughs> And and we you go handle. you go and you cut them in half, handle. expecting to see uh, maybe a basalt or you know hyaloclastite or something. Cut them open, and it's just all manganese crust. Mm. You do run into those every now and again. And these are these kind of have that shape to them, so I'm kind of kind of giving them an eyeball and not really sure what to make of them at the moment. Okay. But uh, yeah, they are they are uh, uh, sort of interleaving with these uh, uh, clear like pillow basalt to uh, lobate uh, lava flows. So, yeah, everything over here is like lava, that's lava, this is, mm, don't know what. Could be some nodules, could be some fragments. Could be an urchin. Yeah, yeah, that is definitely an urchin. Unlike the one earlier. <laughs> I don't know, that, that far away, like my brain just sees something like that and it goes, urchin. <laughs> and that is not always the correct answer. It wants to be a nodule too. It does, you're absolutely yeah. correct. It wants to be a nodule. Yeah, that might be a good mindfulness exercise. Just be a nodule. Yeah. Just, you know, take your time, slowly accrete. Yeah. Get I'm, big. I, I'm so sorry, I might have missed this, but how do nodules form again? So those are those are uh, chemical sedimentary rocks. So it's okay. uh, it, it's uh, metals and stuff that precipitates out of the out of the water column. Okay, okay. Usually we see them like wow. nucleating on rocks and forming the crusts and stuff, but sometimes uh, they, 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 they nucleate, there's the word. Um, sometimes they nucleate on either something really tiny that we just don't see or, yeah, or smaller pieces of things and uh, you end up with a chunk of something that's pretty much just ferromanganese. Okay, yeah. and it all precipitates out of the water column to form this, this nodule clump. Yeah. Okay. Really slowly, so they only grow on average, maybe a few millimeters per million years. And looking at enough of these crusts in cross section, uh, to my eye, it looks like the they actually aren't necessarily a constant accumulation sort of thing because you can see distinctive layers or horizons or like changes in textures sometimes so through the cross section of the crust from uh, the surface of the rock to. Uh, you know the, the outer the, like the top of the crust um, on the thicker ones and you know you, you can see what look like to uh, sometimes distinct phases of growth but uh, yeah it's, it's not it's not a fast process at all so um, yeah uh, these are almost almost certainly part of the, uh, uh, the ecosystem too since uh, there's probably bacteria that uh, call those places home and uh, this is really not a renewable resource like, you can't just take these things, not on human life scales anyway. Geologically, maybe, but um, yeah, it's just, you take the stuff off the seafloor, you're uh, removing an important part of the seafloor, mm. and it's not coming back. That's a good point, yeah. Yup. Yeah. Okay, these are looking more like rock fragments. Yeah, and as we know, microbes are one of the most important parts of uh, an ecosystem. Correct. But yeah, one of the most really. overlooked because we just can't really see them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's been, it's hard to, um, it is difficult to sample and to get those samples. Yeah. That too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was just reading about that the other day, like trying to sample deep sea microbes. It sounds incredibly technical. Yes, yes it can be, and making sure that the microbes that you're collecting are actually from the sample location and not from somewhere in between, maybe mm. contamination and or just, you know, things that are just floating in the water as usual. Yeah, yeah, and decontamination is no easy task in itself. What is this? Can we zoom in? A type of brissing? I, I lied. Yeah, it's like crinoid or brissing it, right? Okay, yeah, it's just a brisingid. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a cool brisingid. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen it's many that It's not a color. vibrant orange brisingid, but that is a brisingid.
All right, well, I was uh, just informed that uh, it was my friend uh, Joshi's birthday. So happy birthday, Joshi. Oh, happy yeah. birthday. Happy How birthday. Oli How oli lahano. Happy birthday, Josh. Joshi. Either one is fine. <laughs> He's, he's, he's a good friend. Oh, so. wonderful. Yep. Aww. Lovely, lovely human being. That's a very large crinoid. That is. Zoom in. Oh, Nasako says happy birthday too. <laughs> Aww, <laughs> Thank you, Asako. So, so. so kind. went down a little crinoid uh, research rabbit hole the other night and uh, after some amazing comments from viewers came in uh, suggesting that these could get uh, on average 50 feet in diameter in sort of prehistoric ancient times and wow. some crinoid wow. fossils wow. as big as a hundred feet in diameter what? does that wow. whoa what this, oh my this, gosh. it's the internet so I don't want to say it's true but uh, <laughs> that's these are, like there's Mega some of the things that I on found. a whole other level. They ruled the world, apparently. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this is interesting. This is one of the. This looks like an ophiroid that looks very similar to the Brazinga that we just saw yeah, earlier, too. Like, yeah. And now we've got a crinoid. Um, With a shrimp. Oh yeah, they were trying to get me mm -hmm. on Discord. With a shrimp. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, it does have a shrimp. Dr. Val, rightfully so, has an outstanding fan club. <laughs> good no, friends just from some, around the world. It's actually some friends from El Paso. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, uh, I started my PhD there. And uh, so these, these are a bunch of uh, geology friends that uh, we've all known each other for how long now? Like over a decade, I think. It's wow. about. I love it. Yeah. So we hang out online pretty regularly. Haven't been able to do that while out at sea, but. Uh, yeah, so it's all about the people that you keep around you. Hundred percent. Yeah. Some friends you just don't let go of. <laughs> One of the most important things we can do, regardless of our career, what path we're going to take, it's take care of the people around us, let them take care of us, and build community, friendships, relationships that matter. No matter what you're doing, it's fun to do it from the control van, from the Nautilus, but you can do it from anywhere you are. Yeah, yeah. and in this day and Lots age, spun, it's easy to keep, it's it's easy to keep in touch with folks. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Where is it? If you pan down below the, the sea star, there's a polychaete. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, good spot. Oh. That does look similar to the ones that we were seeing. Awesome. Good eye. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for that zoom. Kukui, did you see yesterday after our watch, or like right at lunchtime, they had this crazy scale worm. Uh, what? Did you see really? it? No. Oh my god, yes. We have to, oh. I'll find the pictures. It was crazy Please. looking. It was like inside of an anemone or something. Inside in of an, an anemone? anemone. Some, or maybe not an Yeah, it was inside of something. I don't know. If, I can't remember. It's so like yeah. a clownfish? Except not? No, sorry. Probably what I'm, I'm speaking wrong. It was, it was inside of something. But yeah, it was a, a oh, crazy okay. looking scale worm with like golden... Um, legs. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Really I cool. will see this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have to find it. Is that one of those uh, Venus flytrap anemones, or is it a different kind? <coughs> um, let me get another good view of it. Um, it could be. Um, they're in a larger group of 
There's something else there too. Yeah, that's really interesting. Didn't quite catch that. Some barnacles too. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, there sure are. Enough. There's several barnacles on oh this. Uh, what is this? An unbranched bamboo? Wow, they're they're all just like roommates on a high rise. <laughs> yeah, they really are. I wonder if uh, if there was some exposed skeleton for some reason, and they all colonized huh. this one area. That's bizarre. Wow. Yeah, the shape of that anemone at the moment, because it, it's kind of hard to see the oral disc, I wouldn't say specifically that it's an actinocyphia um, Venus flytrap, but I, I think it's probably within the same um, uh, larger group, which is the Metridiodia. But that's a guess. Uh, this is pretty close. So this is more of those pillow basalts that we're seeing here, and we've got yeah, some, uh, some unbranched bamboos on top of them. Looks like some pretty oh thick wow, manganese encrustation. Really and some uh, polyopagons. Yeah. yeah, some dead walteria. Decent amount of sediment. Oh wow, yeah. Very large bamboo whip. Very large bamboo in front of us. Oh, there, there, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always love this kind of morphology on the seafloor because you, it, you can just think about all of these lava flows just kind of like weaving and like uh, uh, just kind of winding their way around each other as they uh, erupt. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I hadn't thought yeah. about that. They, okay. So they don't just like flow directly on top of each other in nice lines that we'll see. They'll, no, they, they, they'll move they, around. They kind of follow create, the, yeah, yeah. They, they, they follow the topography and yeah, with pillow basalts, um, yeah, you can actually look up some uh, footage from uh, uh, the Northeast Lao Basin uh, where some scientists went out uh, in too. 2008 and they happened to put the ROV down while uh, one of the volcanoes was erupting and Oops. they caught footage of uh, they, they caught footage of how the lava erupts underwater. Wow. It's, it's wow. extremely famous footage because it's, it's just so I rare to capture that. You were there for that? Yeah, I collected lava in a in a uh, coffee can. Oh, that was you who got to collect that? <laughs> that, that? That was you? I'm sorry. Oh, we're in the room with a celebrity, folks. Oh. You did what? You guys How are just figuring this out. Robert has, is Aquaman. I've been trying to tell you, he's done everything in the ocean. There I didn't realize it was Robert who sampled that. <laughs> wow. If there's something amazing that's happened in the ocean. Up into the water column. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's future hyaloclastites. <laughs> tell us more. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so when when lava uh, when Tito lava is there too. Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome! That's awesome. Yeah. Also, it is a, it is a small community. We all know each other. <laughs> that's uh, I think that was the same cruise where we were changing watches. And he was handing off to me, and he sat down on the bottom, and he happened to set it down into a, a sulfur lake. Oh. <laughs> oh, <Whoops. laughs> the sulfur wow. ran into the frame of the ROV and solidified. Oh my oh, gosh. That can't be too good for the frame. It like 60 pounds heavier all of a sudden. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, what's this? I think it's another Sinolactid sea cuke. I don't think we've seen a pink one today, though. I thought. Uh, yeah, never mind. I We've seen, oh, we did see a purple one that was swimming. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's very true. I forgot about that. So we that's had a cool. hydrophone on the ROV for that, too, so you can get the, the sounds of the eruption, too. Yeah, that's oh. right. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Did you kind of have a hint that it was going to erupt before you sat down? Oh, yeah, this one's. I remember I was, I was using the Doppler to, to hover, you know, auto XY, and that, it's using sound reflected off the bottom. 
to look at the, the Doppler shift. So you, normally if you wow. go auto X, Y, it'll hold steady on the ground at one point. And we were moving, going backwards. Mm -hmm. Like, what the heck? Why, we got perfect bottom lock. And it was the whole ground was shifting with the eruption. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. How cool is that? Yeah. That's nuts. Although, uh, yeah, definitely very confusing for a moment. Yeah. So you, you did yeah. actually have perfect bottom lock. You just moved with a bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. yeah. Exactly. Look at that. It was doing exactly what you asked it to do. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like, yeah, it's like when you're on a train and the other train is just moving, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or was it like, um, you know, the, the car wash where you, where you stand in the, the that building and it, it kind of takes your car? Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> nice. Hopefully not into the lava, though. <laughs> Yeah, it's just incredible footage. And yeah, the way the way it works is uh, these pillow basalts. You get the you get this lava that um, you know, sort of breaks out. It, it very quickly freezes and crusts over and gets that glassy rind on it. And then uh, I will sit like that for a minute, and then uh, the the pressure of the lava will uh, build up inside um, inside that crust, and it eventually just goes and splits open and uh, busts out forms another little pillow, freezes over, rinse, repeat. And that's that's how it progresses. Um, uh, you know, that, that's how the lava flow uh, moves across there's these a, there's spaces. There's a firework that works kind of that way. You know? It yeah. grows like worms. I forget what they call it. But yeah, black worm, black snakes. Yeah. Black snakes is Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's a little different than uh, like a pohoi hoi, uh, for example, um, on land. Because that that can flow somewhat more, a little bit more continuously, but you still see those breakouts that happen at the toes of Pohoi Hoi flows. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Lava no, is cool. I think the heading might be a little off. We're, we're heading that way. <laughs> it's not a walkabout. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> We don't have much left to cover anyways, so. <laughs> Pilot's choice. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, yeah, yeah, we were talking too much about eruptions. Looking over Dan's shoulder at the public chat, and there is a there is a question uh, from somebody in Chicago asking about expeditions in the Great Lakes and uh, whether it would be worth yeah. doing those. And the answer is very much yes. Um, really, I, I think a couple of OET folks, if I remember correctly, were uh, doing some uh, doing some work in uh, what was it Thunder Bay? Thunder I want to say last year. Thunder oh, Bay. Thunder Bay yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, up on Lake well, there's Superior. Two Thunder Bays. So there's a like Thunder Bay, Canada, and a Thunder Bay, U.S., I guess. Yep. It's up on, uh, is that Lake Ontario? Uh, Lake Superior. Lake Superior, oh, yeah. The Big Lake. Good also one. known to uh, the locals as Gitchy Gumi, if <laughs> I remember correctly. So, what was the What was name. the focus of that? Uh, I do not remember. It was shipwrecks. Looking at oh. some of the marine archaeology, yeah, that makes sense. No shortage so of shipwrecks. Very well preserved there. Yeah, because it's fresh water, uh, very steep thermocline, so it gets very cold in that lake very fast. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ask me how I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I know there were some interesting OET uh, collaborations in some of the some of the caves, um, underwater freshwater caves uh, of Florida. Oh wow! I'm um, doing some imaging there. Some oh, certainly right. some interesting yes. geology. Actually, and that was ecology. over by me. Um, yeah, in close near to Wakulla Springs, Wakulla they were Springs. going through and um, trying to find connections between some of the um, underground water paths. Basically, yeah. the water um, water moves in weird ways underneath, um, you know, the earth um, in Florida um, because of the type of substrate 
um, the type of, um, oh my goodness, bedrock typography. Rock. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, anywho, but basically because of the karst topography, there's water that moves all throughout the area, and so that they were trying to connect um, basically some of the some of the lakes and, and um, with some of the, with the Wakulla Springs. Is that that so. recent expedition that used a little sunfish AUV or ROV? Yeah. That was so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was geeking out real hard about that. It was a 3D <laughs> multi-beam. They were, were multi-beaming yeah. inside the cave. I was yeah. like, what? I want to get involved. No, oh, it's, wow. really, it's, it's a really it's interesting. So cool. Yeah. That with video too. So yeah. cool. 3D multi-beam. Yeah. That's impressive. You should, that's, Noah, that's got one heck of an algorithm. Did you find the picture of it? Like the image of it? Like no, the point yet. cloud is crazy looking. It's awesome. So cool. Yeah, that, uh, that sounds a little complicated to deconvolve, but wow. Yeah. Oh, also, additionally cool about that, they were doing this as like practice lead up to exploring one of the Jovian moons. Yeah. Jovian moons. Yeah. Like extraterrestrial? Yeah. Like oh, extraterrestrial mapping? Moons. Yeah. Huh? But it's like, I mean, I don't know when this mission's actually planned for, but it was like, that's what they, the whole purpose of this. I mean, also to explore the Florida cave systems, but like as practice for yeah. using wow. that. Yeah. That's amazing. So if yeah. you don't know what Jovian is, uh, that's one of, uh, uh, that's anything relating to Jupiter. So, one of Jupiter's moons. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. How many moons uh, does Jupiter have again? Oh, like so a million. Many. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I lost count, but we can look We can look up the current number, but um, every, every it, it gets updated every now and again. Like, we're always finding new moons uh, uh, orbiting Overview. Jupiter and Saturn. By most counts, Jupiter has between 80 and 95 moons. Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah, Imagine the surf over there. <laughs> okay, I remember in the 90s when I was a, a little kid nerding out about like space stuff and wanting to be an, uh, wanting to be an astronomer. Um, I, I thought it was a big deal when Saturn had 21 moons. Yeah. 21 moons. It is a big deal. Those moons yeah. matter a lot. That's it's pretty awesome. It, Saturn has so many more moons than that. I know. But compared the, to Earth? <laughs> yeah, we, we just got the one mostly, but sometimes we have a little more. We can barely handle the gravity of one, so I think uh, it's a good thing that... Uh, we only have our one Mahina <laughs> pulling on us. Yeah. My partner would say the same thing. We <laughs> 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 quite a few uh, oh. interesting NASA experiments out here. That's pretty cool. Yeah. They had this big claw thing once. They just, I just got an Instagram like. Ooh, replay. tiny little fish. <laughs> <laughs> it had like. 25 legs. Oh, I saw a picture of that. Yeah. I was wondering what oh, that was. Wow. It was for like grabbing hold of a rock. Like it kind of, all these claws go around and hug the rock. Oh. <laughs> Back to that uh, conversation we were having the other day about ocean movies. I There's a scene in Interstellar, that one when you, they land on the planet that's like Ocean Planet. Oh, Don't yeah. Remember that? that was a, such a crazy scene. And oh, I don't know, whatever tidal scene. forces, I forget what caused it, but caused the big tsunami to come in. Oh, yeah. Oh. Gravity tides from the nearby black hole. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> such a good movie. Sorry, chat. You're going to get some uh, mild spoilers. The movie's been out for a few years. Yeah, Please go see it. it it's point, it's yeah. worth it. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's such a tense scene. It's like one of my favorite movies. And it's so, so so beautifully shot and animated and everything. Yeah. I gotta say, it's, it part of the part of the plot did go off into the weeds toward the end, but I love like ninety percent of that movie. It's just yeah. so good. Yeah. It's it's so human. Changed into big old rocks. OET uh, has an exciting expedition coming up, just two expeditions from now on the Hawaiian Islands related to advances in 3D imaging and mapping from ROVs themselves. And uh, we'll be testing some new camera systems on board ROV Hercules to uh, map various locations, underwater cliffs and in, uh, in the Hawaiian Islands. Really excited about what, uh, what those 3D point clouds and meshes uh, textures can become and uh, all the ways that they can be utilized to tell stories ecological awesome. cultural geological tie them all together in these incredible 3d spaces so looking forward looking forward to that expedition and 
Just a couple of weeks, actually. I think that one's yeah, going to be in late October. Here for that one. Well, Robert's going to be piloting those new cameras around on Hercules. And Are you staying on throughout the... I love that moment. Yeah, I was the one who was sampling the lava. Yeah. <laughs> like, Aquaman. Dude. I love you, Robert. That was me, yeah. No How big deal. Just, like, just did it right after here. lunch that one day. Yeah, no that's, yeah, that that's, that's how you do this. Get this guy a cookie, somebody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully somebody saves some Oreos. Oh. <laughs> There's an extra package of Oreos on the table right by the snack bin. Ooh. Oh, I wasn't sure. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, he whips it out. <laughs> Who was I saw them sitting there and was wondering if they were going to stay there. <laughs> was it Tito that kept on pulling some out every time we saw him? I think it was Tito. Well, oh, that's right, yeah. He, well, we were in the tool room and he kept on pulling out Oreos from his pockets. So he was like, you want another one? Here's another one. Here's another one. <laughs> Right. Ooh. Oh, that's one of those cool sponges Ooh, that we saw earlier. That's cool. Beautiful. What was the name again? Mm. Oh, with all those folds. Yeah, yeah. really beautiful. Yeah. I think another one's Such an elegant right. sponge. I think it started with a T. can uh, almost imagine a future not too far away where we won't just be live streaming streaming video, but might be live streaming uh, 3D XR and VR environments back oh, to shore. Wow, what a dream. That would be, that would be so, pretty wild. It's going to be pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. Sooner than we That's think, amazing. probably. Imagine if the kids could just come on the dives right with us oh, and be wow. right where Hercules is. Wouldn't that be something? That would be crazy. Like, that. that's a way... That that that's probably one of the best ways I could think of to like make science super accessible and bring you know bring the kiddos in at a young age. Absolutely. Bring them in early. Yeah. Let them play at the bottom of the ocean. They'll uh, they'll teach us they'll teach us plenty. Probably yeah. most of what we need to know. Yeah, like so many of us in the earth sciences kind of find this passion. You know, find find that we love this stuff uh, after we're already adults. Yeah. You know, I'm no exception to that. Why wait? And, uh, kids out there. Yeah, I was always picking up rocks and stuff as a kid, but never knew that geology could be. And yeah, never knew geology was something I could do and get paid to do until much later. All right, I, I can't resist this wow, question, you all. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow, that's a lot of smidges. Beautiful. Oh, wow, black. yeah, we've got a couple oh, of them. Big like stack of features. And the yellow bolosoma yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, could we get a quick zoom on the yellow bol bolosomas? Those just look awesome. It, those might be my favorite sponge. Yellow bolos yellow bolosoma. Yeah. I mean, if you had to pick a sponge, why not? Why not be colorful? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're so. Wow. They're like the sun. So they so are, sad. yeah. <laughs> like they just have such a neat, uh, neat sort of fractal pattern on this side. Mm -hmm. I agree. We have a viewer tuning in who wants to know if your job was a song, what song would it be? So think about that. Oh, wow. I'll give you some time. I feel like that's a multi-dimensional question. It is. It's mm -hmm. true. Wow. If my job was a song? My job was a song. Sure. Wait, what was the question? If my yeah, job? Yeah, if the job or your career or the thing that you, you know, in Hawaiian we might say hana the thing that you are drawn to through your kuleana, to the thing that you do for yourself and your community to make the world a better place? What would the song be? Mm. 
Mm. The internet's concerned about the bandwidth required for our awesome uh, 3D streaming, and they're not wrong, but I think we'll uh, mm. also see incredible improvements in uh, oh, that's beautiful. Thank bandwidth you. technologies. We have the Starlink on order. Yeah. yeah. We got the Starlink. Another alternative, we have a researcher in our mapping group at USF. Um, he's actually uh, been with e OET for a long time. Um, and he developed some programs that you, p you can put on the Oculus th uh, goggles and walk through bathymetry. Yeah. And wow. yeah, yeah, it's I've so crazy. That. It's yeah. really cool. It's crazazy. It's it's really like, cool. Yeah, you can like walk forward and walk down into a crater. And, oh, yeah, that's it's, awesome. It's crazy. That's, well, that's what we're going to be doing here in a couple That's weeks. what we're doing, no, yeah. We're turning no, those. He's probably going to be here. Turning those All landscapes right. into uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was out here testing the Norbit the other last cruise. Yeah, that's awesome. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I love it. It's a very smart guy. He is. Yeah, we're turning uh, with with kids in Hawaii, turning some of those same maps into uh, video game landscapes and uh, exploratory landscapes, so cool. populating them with all kinds of deep sea creatures and uh, beginning to build underwater scenes that somewhat resemble what we what we see when we go on these dives. And, and you can the great thing, you can go back over and over again. You can have a different adventure every time. Hercules only gets to draw one path on these amazing sea mounts, but uh, kids in Hawaii and around the world could draw millions. And mm -hmm. uh, be, mm. be awesome. Oh, that sounds amazing. Hmm. It's really hard to pick a song. I don't know, just with some of the unexpected like twists and turns my career seems to have taken so far. Um, I don't know, maybe Dirty Water by the Foo Fighters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good answer. Oh, Foo Fighters. I love those guys. Oh, they're awesome. Been sort of a, a constant for me over the years. They, they, they figured out music that just works. Yeah. And it's great. Of course, there are like a million others. It could be a whole album. <laughs> What's all this black stuff here? Looks like yeah. worms. It does look like worms. Oh, yeah. that looks like bioturbation. Yeah. Actually, it does. It looks like spots where, um, actually, maybe not black stuff, but the removal of sediment. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. What was the word? What was the uh, German word? Lebensperin. Uh, oh. Lebensperin. Leben. I believe it is spelled like L E B E N S P U R R E N. Yeah. Lebensperin. Lebensperin. Yeah, that's that's what I would know as bioturbation, but I like Lebensperin better. That's more descriptive. Life traces. Yeah, that's more descriptive. It's very fun. Bioturbation is a very broad term. For some reason, it just stuck in my brain. I like that one. It's a good one. Oh, there's two. Cr there's yeah. two squats in there. Yeah. Roommates in that beautiful Christ Porsche. Yeah. I wonder how much they get charged. Per <laughs> <month>. <laughs> Housing. I mean, they're sharing a room, so. That's true. <laughs> oh no. If it was in Honolulu, they couldn't afford it, guaranteed. <laughs> mm -hmm. DC's not a lot better. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, and what's interesting in that is the pattern, too, because you can kind of see uh, meandering just a bit. pretty, yeah, good meandering, but also pretty tight spatial coverage within that. There are people who just, uh, their entire career is looking at Lebensburn, the traces of life left on the seafloor. I believe it. Wow. Yeah, they would be able to tell you more, you know, or at least have an idea of what type of organism or even, you know, what organism made these traces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I can tell you so much about what, you know, we otherwise wouldn't be seeing here. And yeah, it's, it's really surprising how much information you can get out of what's been left behind. Absolutely. Wow, that's pretty extensive. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. Is it just me or do those basalt lobes look a little bit like dragon's heads? 
was going to say, it almost looked like a face. Ooh, a little, little bit, like yeah. It's a double-headed, triple-headed uh, mole. I see a tortoise. Yeah. It's a sea yeah, hydra. We, we might want to run. Yeah, it looks like we're seeing more of these chrysogorges. Yeah. Seems so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is something purple? I know we're not purple? in Purple? Yeah, no. just down oh, there at the bottom of the screen. Oh. It looks red to me, but maybe I was yeah. looking at the wrong thing. There's definitely some red in it, too. Right. You know what's interesting is that, like, color and its interpretation has a uh, cultural aspect to it. Does it really? Yeah. But what do you mean by interpretation? Like, hang on, I gotta, I gotta look something up before I say anything. Okay. Uh, good. I know in uh, Hawaiian culture, red is also <laughs> one of the colors <laughs> of uh, the ali'i. Uh, you commonly see it on their kahili there or their there? feather. Mm -hmm. um, I think they were looking at something else. What's the English uh, description the of kahili? Like right. uh, a yeah, staff? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like kahili. Yeah. yeah. There it is right and there. And their, their cape thing? and their, their helmet. It's like a signal of royalty, yeah. oh. uh, nobility, oh. red, yellow, a lot of, yeah. yeah that looks new to Branky. Capes, kahilis are like a standard, or it's on uh, like a wooden pole. Is that a nudie? Tiny uh, mushroom. Like a oh. mushroom. Oh, a little baby mushroom? Oh, it's so yeah. it's, I honestly have no idea. Wow. Yeah, here we go. It's um, all right, I'm, gonna, I'm still I'm still chasing down details, but yeah, uh, there are different cultures that can that um, and a lot of it has to do with like language and stuff. Where uh, you uh, some cultures have uh, like many words for like different shades of green. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, uh, blue wasn't awesome. even really like a like a perceived color. It was kind of lumped in with green for a long time in humanity. Uh, so like. Uh, Depending on what your background is, you may be able to see like like very fine uh, variations in uh, the shade of a color that someone like me would not be able to perceive. Yeah, interesting. Just very slight differences in change. I was reading about this a couple of years ago, and something just tipped me off with that. And I'm trying to find I'm trying to find that uh, information again. Yeah, I remember reading about this too. I think in like a Nat Geo article. That's, yeah, interesting. that's so interesting. I was talking to uh, Kapana Captain Pavel the other day in the other lounge and he was talking about like Polynesian navigators and he was saying that it's so fascinating because their eyes can pick up different shades like a lot more shades of colors than the European eye his words not mine um, and I was like wow that's something I never knew he's like yeah they can just see a lot more variations of like certain hues yeah it's like Oh, wow. And a lot of that's linked to language. Like, if you have more ways to describe something mm -hmm. or a more, uh, more nuanced uh, spectrum that, that you can basically speak about, um, your, your brain is going to pick up those, it's, it's going to learn how to pick up those divisions, yeah. you know, those, those differences and those shades. I don't know uh, if I want to go. With those words. I don't know if I want to go down the dinner time uh, conversation rabbit hole again, but in a lot of ways, in my mind, it relates to whether we see things as sort of distinct and separate or if we see things as interrelated and along a spectrum. Like radiance, and, yeah. Uh, indigenous yeah. cultures tend to see most parts of life as, as existing on mm -hmm. spectra yeah. um, and see them as dynamic and shifting and nuanced Ooh. and changing. Whereas, uh, you know, in Western cultures, course. we've been taught to isolate things, separate them, categorize them. Yeah. You know, we don't see, we see colors as, uh, you know, a few distinct colors rather than as a subtle changes in wavelengths of light. Yeah, yeah. and even how we oh, that's beautiful. we classify things within our environment too. My auntie is um, Inupiaq, and she lives in Yuktavik in Barrow, Alaska. And she's an Alaska native, and married my uncle, who's a Kanaka. He's a Hawaiian from Kauai, but. Um, she was just telling me about all the different words to describe snow and ice mm -hmm. up there. Whereas in Hawaii, I mean, we have a lot of different words to describe swells, uh, waves, the ocean, yeah. um, bodies of water near us. Uh, but just fascinating to see how language comes from the land, mm. um, yeah. no matter wherever, like wherever you are. Well, yeah, yeah, it's going to be tailored to everything around you and all of the nuance and everything that you need to get 
you know, information to do whatever you need to do, you know, to thrive. Yeah, yeah it comes yeah. from the land and the relationship to it, right? Uh, this this idea that it's it's in the spectrum, it's in the transition, it's in the movement between colors that we come to understand our places, not uh, a single painting capturing a single moment of time, but that our places are always dynamic. We're always dynamic. I, I have a one of I studied neuroscience as an undergraduate and. Um, was very fascinated by perception and there's a, uh, a really interesting practitioner uh, named Bo Otto who does, uh, you can Google him, O-T-T-O, -T -T and there's some really cool demonstrations of how easy it is to trick the, the human mind into taking the same colors but orienting them in different ways and different layers and creating en entirely different visual experiences um, with the exact same colors and objects so mm -hmm. it's uh it's it's a lot of fun and if we recognize that that, that dynamic nature of things things like the ocean become even more exciting mm -hmm. for sure yeah and it, it kind of it makes for an interesting conversation about like uh cross-cultural communications when you have some differences that are that fundamental because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, you know it, it's it, it kind of ties into that whole uh, language uh, uh, that the whole deep tie between the language or languages that you speak and your uh, and your culture. Yeah. But um, yeah, and there and th there are some uh, you know each culture has uh, you know various things that are you know weighted or uh, de-weighted as far as importance goes or uh, meaningfulness uh, significance. Oh look what we got! Oh, oh yes! yes. Oh <laughs> my <laughs> god! And we will yes, continue pause. this momentarily. We need to pause oh for a Dumbo octopus for a moment. freak out. Oh We're gonna pause for a freak out. Oh, oh gosh! Yay! We have his little ears. Oh, mahalo We've been waiting our turn. Waiting Great! Our Can turn. we get this? Our time. The other watches. <laughs> Can we get the lasers off? Oh, and we have so much time. Oh and it's a God. swimming Dumbo. Oh, my gosh. Hello, friend. You wanted them off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One They're both hitting the buttons. buttons. <laughs> you can push the button. <laughs> oh. Zach, do you mind hitting it again? Thanks. I'll push the button. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're just all excited. <laughs> yeah, our pilots were pushing the button at the same time. <laughs> I've never seen one. This is incredible. Wow. Oh. Hey. Oh, my goodness. It's and it's so flying. Oh. Oop. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Oh, That's so cool. Amazing. Okay, we get enough? No. <laughs> no. Oh, 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 no. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I'm flashing back to that video of the manatee that bounces off the aquarium window. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little buddy. Just such wise eyes. Yeah. Just cruising along. Except when there's a bamboo in the way. <laughs> oh, wow. So special to see. Oh, wow. It just kind of all squishes into itself. <laughs> Are we good? I don't want to harass him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it just curled all its little tentacles. It did. Oh, like oh look at the rolls. sea star. <laughs> <laughs> we love you too, sea star. No. Goodbye, Dumbo. We oh, love you. Ahoy. Oh. Malamopono. 
take care. I know near shore in the sort of late summer time, this is a, a very active time for he'e, for octopus on the shallow reefs around Hawaii. A reproductive action, they get a little frisky and uh, you can make pretty quick friends with, uh, <laughs> with the octopus on the reef. Hmm. I'm sure a bunch of friends uh, out there at home are enjoying those sights and maybe those tastes. Yeah. But uh, make sure we leave leave the mamas, leave them out there, the big healthy ones out there, and keep making more octopus babies. <laughs> we were talking about colors, but we could talk about other things. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. no, that, that it is interesting that that. Uh, sort of uh, fundamental difference it's a functional language and culture and you know how that can inform how we communicate cross culture that was the point I was trying to make but beyond that I don't really have any more thoughts at least for now I was just <coughs> thinking about the song for for if my work was a song anyone seen the film curious George about our favorite little mm -hmm. curious monkey and mm -hmm. uh, Jack Johnson one of our local Hawaii yeah. musicians wrote a great song for that track, Upside Down, and, oh, yeah. and uh, I'd say that one, I'd, I'd take Upside Down as mine. Mm, I don't think I've seen that one. And aloha to the Johnson Ohana, if you guys are listening. Mm. We love you guys. Doing concerts for Maui. I saw yeah. him doing great work, wow. uh, helping raise money for Lahaina. And uh, he's been uh, the Johnson Ohana, Jack and his wife Kim there family have been supporting uh, great work aina based mm -hmm. learning and yeah. uh, plastic free uh, going plastic free hawaii and other kokua hawaii foundation They're doing awesome. a lot of great things in, yeah. in the island so oh, that's we, fantastic we appreciate them so much oh. our fearless leader has entered the van hey <laughs> We gotta look serious. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, Megan. Oh, oh, you just it's missed our Dumbo nice. moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was good. Oh, what is this weird thing? Uh, is that a sea urchin? I don't oh, know. Everything everything started to look like sea urchins. <laughs> uh oh. Val. Apparently, I'm having a sea urchins night. Why not? You're gonna see them in your dreams now. Maybe. It's gonna be a prickly dream. Right, it's been though. some pretty wild dream. Hey, I, hey, broken clock is right twice a day. There you go. <laughs> Not everything's rock. Yeah, we can zoom in. <laughs> oh, it is a little. It is that is a, an is a little urchin is. bell. What a spot. I don't think well, it does. Oh, wait, oh, wait, I don't is it an urchin? urchin? Oh, wait, oh, wait. No? yeah. No, uh, it's another one of those anemones that looks like an urchin. Oh, a little it. tricky. <laughs> little wow. <stage>. Actually, <laughs> or is it the thing that looks like an anemone that isn't actually an anemone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is one of those weird. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. What's is next that to it? What is that? What are you what the oh, is it? Is that Wait, a, what are y'all looking What is are y'all looking at? It's the oh, white stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's everything here. <laughs> Wait, what is that white stuff? Sand. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I gotta agree with Dan on that one. No, Solid there, call. there's like right by that that green. Is that yeah. what you're looking at? That yeah, green? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. there's, you there's already a call it pelagic sedimentation. Is that a worm? It's a, I, oh, it's a worm. Oh yeah, it is. Oh, hey, oh, little worm. That's cool. Little wormy friend. Oh. And there's like a white, that white stalk mm -hmm. that, that's, I, 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 yeah, that's I'm about not, the sand. <laughs> I'm not sure about what that white stalk is. Uh, the it white stalk, a Asako is saying, is a solitary scleractinian coral. Oh, no, I think that's what this is. Oh, that? Oh, that's what they that's were saying. That's what they were saying the other day, and I was like, that's I don't cool. know about that, but I, I honestly didn't get a good look at it the other day, so now. That does now not look like a coral to, to me. That looks really, really big. Charmed and surprised. Oh, we got shrimp. Oh. Yeah, because there's also there's also that. Yeah, uh, and no, the shrimp. Look. Yeah, <laughs> the ID guide is proving us wrong, and a sucker right. I got That's it's, a coral. It's got to load. Hold it's a, a coral. Oh, it's pretty tiny though. It's loading. That thing was really oh. small. I can't Cario believe we're pretty, we're pretty zoomed in. Stefano Cyan. We spotted it from a ways too. out. Yeah, good yeah, spot. 
Alec, turn those lasers on. I bet that thing's about. Oh, there <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, can you turn the lasers on? Yeah, yeah, they're only. It's, See, it's less than that's an inch. That's big. That's an inch. It's like a couple centimeters. That's an inch. AKA an inch. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was agreeing. Uh, oh. In case anyone was wondering. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic. Great. So okay, this, this is, is a kind coral. Of my mind. This, this is a coral? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. where's the polyp? Is there that many is polyps? the polyp. That is one single that is polyp. polyp. I believe that it's, is one singular polyp. Is it polyp. like Solum bellusa? You remember that stock seed pen that Solum had Bula? one polyp on the... Oh, um, the you know what? Uh, yes and no. Um, no, because they're um, different um, groups, but um, but they are still uh, Nadarians, so, you know... Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so very similar. Um, yeah. No, yeah, I don't know much about those, to be honest. They're pretty interesting. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Isako. Yeah, yeah I really appreciate that because I never would have gotten that at all. <laughs> like, my brain does not equate uh, coral polyps with huge. Oh, the Solumbula, that's the... Like that. Is that the... Yeah, well, I mean, let's try to find that one. Yeah. Um, Umbulula. Nope. That's Because that thing. just has that one large polyp at the end of that stalk. Have you seen that? I'll have to Google it. I think it's a sea pen. It is a kind it of sea pen. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm already looking in there. I think it's... Um, I think that's my maybe multiple polyps, but... Yeah. It's a fun one. You'll oh, I think this I is have a feeling that the oh, white, the white stock, one might have yeah. been a juvenile umbelula right there. Yeah. yeah. Or the one right above. Is that an umbelula too? The one yeah, right these are it? all yeah. umbelulas. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. This nice. is maybe one of the better pictures of it for you. For anyone at home looking along, we are using the. Okeanos um, Ocean Exploration and Research uh, Ooh, Benthic, okay. uh, Deep Benthic Animal Guide. And under sea pens, you can look at the Umbalula Day. Um, so it is related to the Solumbalula. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Really? Oh, Here, okay. Here's another Umbalula. I'm feeling proud of myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, it should be. And we're heading into some uh, unbranched bamboo area. Yeah, look at these. So this is mm -hmm. the umbelula does have multiple polyps. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm just like kind of blown away. Yeah, that's that's incredible. See, this is why I like being on this ship. I get to see something new all yeah. the time. Have we zoomed on one of these uh, unbranched bamboos recently? I don't think we have. I don't think so. Yeah, either. we could get a quick zoom. We could get an ID. Yeah, and if you're just following along with us, uh, we are uh, just coming up on our second to last waypoint of this dive. Up near the uh, summit area of Willard Seamount, uh, located uh, pretty close to the Northwest Hawaiian Ridge in Papa Naumakuakea Marine National Monument. Oh well, look, it's got something on it too. Okay, Asako's over here in science chat, look, just like spitting coral facts and I'm just blown away over here. She says uh, uh, the, the coral that we just saw, this uh, scleractinian, uh, can act, uh, some species of this uh, kind of coral can actually dig in the sediment and hide itself. Nice. Oh, that's crazy. Whoa, that is crazy. That is. Now, is that just a, a hydroid that's on that or is it just a large polyp? I'm sorry, Amber, I'm having a really hard time hearing you. Uh, the kind of center piece it looks kind of like either this hydroid or, or that. Uh, I think she's talking about the little... Uh, oh, oh, it's a... Yeah, it's that's a squat lobster. lobster. Yeah, yeah, there's a squat lobster out. in the oh, middle okay. there, actually. With its arms just, like, totally yeah. stretched out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a yeah. unique yeah. angle on it. Now, what are, what are these white things uh, between the polyps that we're seeing all along the stem? 
Honestly, it could be parasites. Could be, or hold on a second. Are those you know, eggs? I could be. I mean, eggs are some of the largest uh, cells. So yeah. Like, are those could also be eggs? like sand? I'm not entirely positive. Um, but yeah, that'd be interesting. I I am not sure what that is. Could could be uh, internal organs. Um, but yeah, no, that's really interesting. It's also interesting that a lot of them seem to have them too. Yeah. So, um, that's cool. Yeah, no, this is a beautiful view. It is. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, there's a green thing. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's basically the technical term at this point. We just don't know what those are. <laughs> and you just kind of randomly spot them every now and again. <laughs> That's a beautiful zoom. Thank you. Like some dead sponge there. Some interesting pillow fragments. Looks like looks like that one kind of got extruded before it uh, broke off. Interesting. Yeah, they do that sometimes. Like sometimes you'll see like sometimes you go up like a cliff face with a bunch of broken pillow basalts, and you, you every now and again you'll just see one that like you know you could tell things must have broken off shortly after the eruption because you can see one that just like. It's kind of just like extruded and then it uh, extruded over the cliff and you can just kind of see it just like hanging there. Oh. Yeah. Very interesting. So yeah, most we of these sampled a couple of those in the Lao Basin back in 2017. So would you, would, would you consider that most of these are um, uh, pub assaults? Sorry, I saw something I was interested in. Can we get a zoom of this? We've yeah, seen, there are I think we've those. seen a couple. I'm not sure. Yeah, because there's another one back there. there yes, there is. There's one another. Right there. There's a there's a couple of them. It actually. I think there's a sea star on. There's something on it. Yeah. I'm not sure what. Oh. <coughs> yeah, oh, it yeah. does look it's like there's a sea star. star. Yeah, yeah I'm wondering like if it's a. Oh, sorry. Uh, it all looks like they had uh, the same associate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what's interesting is. Um, the, so the polyps are s very small and very yeah. spiky, which okay. is also telling me that this is a particular type of primnoid, um, which is interesting. And so it's, um, uh, yeah, because primnoids have uh, dense and pretty large sclerites. So that's pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah, beautiful little primnoid. And yeah. Asako said it might be a Norella. Mm. What'd they say? Uh, Norella. Oh, Norella, yeah, maybe. Um, can't tell. Um, hard to tell with the with the polyps um, the way they are, but yeah, very interesting. Great, thank you for that, Asako. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thanks front row for the zoom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we've seen. Uh, I don't think we were seeing those earlier. Not sure if last watch saw them. The the norellas. Um, the, the small branching. Yeah. Um, Thin primnoids, yeah, unsure. I didn't notice them um, when we, when I was glancing at it in the lounge, but yeah, I don't recall hearing all oh, that. Interesting come up. looking. It's not looking too uh, healthy, is it? Or uh, is it? Depends on what it is. Yeah, if it's supposed to be that color, then right, right then exactly. I, then I think it would be healthy, <laughs> but if it, if right, it's I'm, I'm going off a of sponge color. So <laughs> <laughs> my bad. <laughs> no, you're good. I'm I'm wondering what. Uh, yeah, I'm still like, what is it? You yeah, know, um, yeah. I'm thinking. It's got an interesting branching pattern. Yes, it does. It very uh, much does. Oh, it's is got that some hydroids? weird looking stuff in it, too. Yeah. I'm kind of, I'm leaning towards hydroids. Yeah, me too. And I think um, there's a worm Especially looking in over it? here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a worm behind oh, it. Oh, there is. Yeah. 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 Nice spot. Yeah. Well <laughs> done. He's got laser vision for worms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're my faves. One of my faves. 
<laughs> yeah, hydroids can get pretty big. Yeah, it's always surprising how large they actually can get. I've also seen them like in, in some cases just like completely colonize a rock and it looks like it it looks like just a really grassy rock. It's kind of spectacular. Yeah. This is interesting. I'm wondering what these um oh. what these, you know, sort of yeah, what is that? Things <laughs> are is that inside like too. <laughs> snail shells or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a wild looking worm. I think worm. there's another worm in there, there's too. Worms. Yeah. I'm wondering yeah. if those are like egg cases or something. I, mm. Mm. I'm seeing like these parapodia that are usually associated with uh, polychaete worms oh, these? that are sticking out. Oh, yeah, 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 yes. I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. What are parapodia? Um, it's kind of like appendages um, they use for locomotion. So oh, okay. kind of like legs, but they have a lot of them. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. Um, so that's why legs. you... A lot of legs. Yeah. Lot of legs. <laughs> <laughs> that's why sometimes they kind of look frilly a little bit when they move across the water, I feel like. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for that, Sam. Yeah, ma'alo nui. Yeah, that's why um, they have like that distinct like little wave oscillating yeah. motion. It's a few more legs than I'm uh, usually comfortable with, but they get a pass because they look cool while they're swimming. <laughs> Oh man, so Mike was suggesting we take a rock at waypoint nine, but there are some neat looking rocks around here. Um, they'll probably be pretty similar at waypoint nine. They probably what? They'll probably be similar at waypoint nine. So they're very similar morphologies, at least from what we can tell from the uh, multi-beam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the last depth that a rock was collected at was 1595. Yeah, we're... Uh, we're not too much different from there, so pr we'd probably be sampling about the same stratigraphy. So, okay. yeah, we'll we'll hold off on that for now. Now, okay, so the the topography of the seamount is kind of interesting in that it's got multiple kind of small high points. Is yeah. That, um, w does that tell you anything about the volcano, or um, um, could that could that lead? Could there be different information on some of these different high points? I mean, it's 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 possible. I I don't. I don't really know. Okay. Can I mean, a little bit on you, Zach. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Some of our viewers suggesting that uh, the globs near the bottom of that hydroid may have been Dumbo octopus eggs. There are oh, a wow. few different viewers really? saying that wow. that's a proposal. That would be cool. Huh. You know, someone told me to look out for uh, for those eggs. Interesting. Yeah, and that um, octopus eggs will be within, uh, sometimes, are in corals. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Maybe hydroids. Love it. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, and one, one of the things kind of complicating the interpretation up here in the summit region, like morphologically, is that mm -hmm. this is a pretty, uh, th this the seamount has been pretty modified by uh, some secondary structural things because we've got that we had the we we started off in that uh, in the mouth That's of that cliff that can't yeah yeah, yeah. and we we're seeing clear clear evidence that there was uh, like um, you know faulting um, like a, a some sort of a slump or a collapse at some point because we we're seeing a lot of cross sections of the stratigraphy okay so yeah I'm I'm actually not sure if the summit area has been modified too and because it looks like uh, you know, we've got a collapse here on the south and also on the north. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it could be possible that, you know, maybe maybe this seamount used to be a little bit more shallow at one point earlier in its history. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to tell, but it looks like those those collapse features kind of start up near the summit region uh, in the overall bathymetry. Okay. So, okay. yeah, sometimes I can take the top of the top of the seamount with it. But I, I don't know for sure, unfortunately. Cool. It's a great question, though. Like, I, I, I wish I knew a little bit more about geomorphology to answer that better. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've got a little... Anemone. What is that? Oh, yeah, that's an anemone. Right there. No. 
So beautiful. These are the pillow basalts again. Oh. Is that another green thing? Um, I don't think so, because that one, you can see it kind of sticking really? up a little bit. Kind of, right? yeah, on that, that ledge. Yeah, the, the green things are like really flat. Oh, what I see, are, I see. Uh, yeah, sorry I was uh, silent for a minute. Um, I hit a button on my uh, audio control that I shouldn't have and uh, didn't know how to get back out of it. <laughs> so I had to go get a little help. I'm glad you're back. Ooh, is that, that a Xenof Xenofire? Oh, <gasps> Xenofire yes. Yeah. Yes. Wait, yeah. Oh, that yeah. might be a green thing. Never mind. I think you're right. <gasps> Yay! Green oh, thing! Whoa. Yeah. Xenophy fours are cool. Um, they're um, unicell unicellular, I think, organisms. Some, some of the they're largest. They're supposed to be, right? I yeah. think so, yeah. They're a type of forum. And they're so big. Yeah. What? That's the whoa. biggest forum I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. They could get that big. Uh, Dan, you were asking about pillow basalts, right? When I managed to, like, have a tech issue. They disappear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was very badly timed on my part. No worries. Uh, yeah, we're, it, it, look, it looks like uh, we're still in some pillow basalts and some fragments. It's a that lot of broken like lavas. That oh, just looks like yeah. Yeah, rock staining. Oh, that's cool. Little squat lobster right there. Yeah, yeah tiny little squat lobster. Oh, and it's so small. Thing. A little <laughs> cup coral, too. Is that just standing on the rock too, or? Hard to say. Yeah. yeah, we kept seeing a bunch of these around here last year, and I uh, even tried to sample one, and it didn't go very well, so. Yeah, you need like some kind of scraping tool. Yeah. Yeah, so some of the information that we found about xenophyophores previously is that they are unicellular, but they have many nuclei, um, and they're able to form these very large, um, intricate um, tests or kind of shells almost. Um, and they're they're kind of they're found. I think they're found pretty much everywhere, um, really? but especially on like abyssal plains. Especially on abyssal plains. Wow. Or at least that's I think that's where they were first oh. found. But fish. Oh, oh, is that a snapperbrink or a halosaur? Oh, I don't know. Could be a halosaur. It looks similar to the one that uh, the previous watch saw during dinner. With that flat. Halosaur. Oh, that's so oh, cute. Yeah. Yes, that is a halosaur. Guaranteed. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, halosaurs are so fun. Wow. Um, they have very. I, I just I like how they move around and their um, their fins are really pretty and mm -hmm. then um, Ooh, they have a very goodness. indicative type of swimming. Uh, hey buddy. Wow. So yes, look at me. <laughs> just giving a beautiful <laughs> yeah. example of right hey, now. Oh, 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 sorry. Attack of the Halosaur. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that should be a movie. <laughs> <laughs> One of those uh, sci-fi, like, like, so good or so bad they're good movies. <laughs> Short data. Somebody's swimming over there. Oh yeah, there's another little something there. Yeah. Just as an update, more and more votes for uh, Dumbo octopus eggs coming in from online, including some citations. Uh, so, oh cool. Uh, oh interesting. Interesting yeah. to look into that and yeah.
Um, it was just something falling. Did that come off of us? I was say, <laughs> hopefully not. It would have fallen a far away from us. And those look like another one of those primnodes that we just saw too. Yeah, that basically is the same density as water, whatever it is. Yeah. Given how it's flowing. Yeah, chat's coming through with the uh, with the help on that ID. That's awesome. Very Yeah, more pillow basalt flows here. Maybe sort of getting into low bait territory. What's the difference visually, Val? Um, I, I kind of go by size of uh, like both both sides of some of the forms I'm seeing, but also uh, whether or not they they look like they've been uh, uh, starting to coalesce together or uh -huh. not. <laughs> low bait's going to be a little bit larger forms. And yeah, it, uh, it, it looks a little bit oh more yeah, continuous, whereas those, uh, um, pillows are just kind of like clumpy and yeah. attaches smaller. An anemone to the it. back of it. Yeah. Aww. Excellent. He's just like staring us down. Kind of spooky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can look, at him, look at him right in the eye. <laughs> yeah, it's a good looking little guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got our amazing co-expedition leader, Megan Cook, in here, breaking her own rules, taking photos uh, all around the control <laughs> van. Well, she also took the sign down, yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's true. She just changed the rules. <laughs> that's what the boss can do. I think we all agree it's been an absolute pleasure uh, experiencing the leadership of both Megan and Daniel, our expedition leaders. Uh, doing outstanding work leading here, here. this team. Ew. Yes, most definitely. Great alakai, great leaders, great people to work with, learn from, sail with. Mm -hmm. 100%. Uh, definitely not nodules. Definitely rock fragments. Oh, is that a uh, sea pen? A what? That might be a sea pen. Ooh. I am not sure at this point. Yeah, I mean. An interesting proposal coming in from one of our viewers who's uh, wondering what we think. Uh, what if we had a stem oh. bar where adults could... Oh, what is that? I think that's a. I think that's hydro. a sponge or I something. Don't, it has. I think it's a sponge dock. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a sea pen. With some <laughs> hydroids. I do not it. know what that is. Man, I I'm not I'm not batting well on the bio right now. <laughs> I'm also spotting it pretty zoomed out, so <laughs> it's not a great defense, uh, but. It's an interesting shadow though, what it creates. Yeah, That's I think cool. it's picking up uh, two of Herc's corner lights. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thanks for the thanks for the zoom. It did look a lot like a sea pen from further out. Honestly, I saw a sea pen too. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's why we go and zoom on things. Yeah. Make sure mm -hmm. we know what we're actually talking about. Oh, floating pink thing. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Our very technical terms. <laughs> Thingy, yes. <laughs> yes pink thing. Hey, it's a very useful term. I agree. I like I like that term. Absolutely.
So Val, I'm um, just looking at where we're at now and where we're getting to with Waypoint 9. Do you know if the 1045 is supposed to be like a hard deadline or is it just like once we get to Waypoint 9? Um, I would say no later than 1045 because we want to be back on uh, back on deck at midnight, but I don't think anybody would complain if uh, we ascended a little bit earlier either. Okay, so. well, I'm just thinking based on the rate we've been going, we may need to pick up speed a little bit just okay. to get to waypoint nine. Okay, well, if we don't make waypoint nine, we, okay. that's, that's fine. Okay, know. very cool. So, I mean, we'll probably get most of the way there if we okay. continue like this. Works for me. Check in. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks. This is interesting. It looks like we've changed uh, sort of the sediment type. Um, yeah, yeah. A little, yeah, a it's uh, there. We've got a lot more. It's looking a bit thicker here. We are seeing more things uh, sitting in the sediment. Yeah. And I'm going to be cautious and not s say anything mm. about what they See, might I be. I think some of these might be sea pens. You think? <laughs> yeah. They kind of yeah, look like sponges. Red, <laughs> there's a red stock um, lower. <laughs> Um, beneath the porch, that may be a sea pen. Okay. No, it's the same thing. There's an abundance of them. So we have dead. Are these Walteria? No. I Someone can't on see. The, one of our viewers is saying uh, it could be a polychaete tube. Oh, it could is be a polychaete. Interesting. Yeah, because it's a little unusual to see uh, sponges um, sitting in sediments. Right. Of course, it could right. be why they're not really looking alive. What's that orange thing? That looks like a piece of bubblegum coral. Except I'm not sure that's what it might actually be. Yeah, oh, no. And all the zoom? That's all of it. All the zoom in the bank. Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. Yeah, I think there was one that was like right in front of the porch. Okay. On the left side. I, th I think yeah. this changes in part because uh, we're we're pretty much on the summit of uh, right at waypoint eight, so we're on this little local uh, high feature. Yeah, that's interesting. It does look very very different from what we've been seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think once we get a little further along, it'll change back to uh, what it had just been most likely. Awesome. Well, thank you for the zooms. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Appreciate it. So yeah, sponges or tube worms? That's an interesting question. Yeah, I wouldn't limit it to just. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I have no idea. It's pretty interesting though. It is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, we can't know everything. It's got to be a thankless task being a biologist on one of these expeditions because <laughs> uh, you, you can just get. Everybody throwing, hey, what's this? What's that at you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, and you're like, uh, yeah. And, and so many of us, uh, you know, we we end up specializing like one thing, or just a handful of things. You know, we we don't know everything. It's funny reading the comments because we get a lot of people. That is 100% this. This is for sure that. Yeah. A lot of confidence from home. Let's appreciate the help. Especially and, the uh, all caps. All caps. <laughs> Put it in all caps. Yeah, it's okay. Yep. We're, we're glad for the uh, assistance okay. on the journey mm -hmm. and the company. Yeah, I'm always a little cautious with interpretations where I don't think I have enough information to say something confidently, but, um, you know, I, I might figure it out later and, you know, I'll speak out with a little more confidence because, you know, sometimes, sometimes what you see locally geologically isn't necessarily the full story of what you're seeing and you need to you need to look a little bit further into the stratigraphy or go a little further along and yeah like last year it took us a while to figure out that what we were looking at were uh, pieces of a pumice raft yeah mm, yeah all right you said yeah because at first uh yeah one thought was that we might have been looking at some unusual type of xenophile for been logging yeah i've been logging yeah, do you want to explain to people uh, what, what a pumice raft might, what that might be, and um, for anyone who's listening at home who doesn't know? Sure, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, there, there are a lot of volcanoes uh, that uh, uh, sit on uh, margin, uh, margins of uh, the, the Pacific, uh, not necessarily all the way around, uh, but uh, they, they uh, 
encircle a significant portion of the ocean, and uh, some of you may know that as the so-called uh, ring of fire. Mm -hmm. uh, these are actually volcanoes that form at oh, uh, sea star. Uh, convergent margins, which is where two tectonic plates meet and collide. So um, they converge on each other, and in cases like that, one ends up one ends up diving beneath the other, and you end up subducting that plate back into the mantle. And mm -hmm. uh, with that, it brings down you know sometimes you know brings down crust, lithosphere, sometimes uh, sediment, often a lot of water. And as that plate dives into the mantle, it starts to heat up, and that water starts to uh, uh, starts to move out of that plate. There's a whole dewatering process, and that and that water being added to overlying plate can generate some melt, which uh, creates these uh, volcanoes along oh, these that's arcs. Great. So, um, you know that, that it's it's not uncommon for these to be erupting, and oh, yeah, uh, not uncommon for um, <coughs> not uncommon for several dozen volcanoes uh, around the planet to be erupting at any given time. And uh, uh, these arc volcanoes are very gas and water rich and they will, uh, they tend to produce explosive eruptions. So um, like, uh, you know, a lot of folks have heard of uh, the Mount St. Helens eruption, so like that. And uh, the ones around the Pacific uh, will um, generate a lot of pumice in these explosive eruptions. So it's like very gas rich, uh, lava that sort of puffs up like popcorn. It has a lot of air bubbles inside it, and that, that lets that rock actually float. Because with that air, that makes it uh, less dense than water. And you can generate just these rafts of uh, uh, pumice. And, uh, you know, they, they uh, uh, these rafts can stick around for days, weeks, months. And uh, uh, they uh, the pieces of pumice in this raft, they kind of bounce against each other and uh, 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 erode a little bit, get broken apart, so they kind of form these rounded uh, uh, pieces of rock. And eventually, you know, uh, water does seep through uh, 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 the uh, the vesicles, the, the holes in this rock, becomes waterlogged, and eventually uh, sinks to the sea floor. And um, uh, this this is something that we pull up uh, when we're when we're dredging occasionally. We've seen a bunch of these on the expedition, and it looks like. You know, there may have been a uh, pumice raft that made it uh, all the way over here from one of those uh, arc volcanoes somewhere uh, uh, from uh, one of the edges of the Pacific. So, um, yeah, that's how you get a pumice raft. Wow. So uh, places where we know these these get produced because we can see them in satellite imagery every now and again are places like uh, uh, Tonga. And some of those come from submarine eruptions uh, uh, as well, because not all of the oh, Tongan volcanoes uh, actually sit above water. So that's where you have two oceanic plates uh, colliding. So, um, yes, yeah, so some of them are above water, some of them are not. And uh, there, there can be occasionally some pretty massive uh, uh, submarine eruptions along the Tonga arc. Um, one of my office mates at UH uh, did his PhD on one of them. And super interesting to hear him talk about it. Like, absolutely fascinating wow. stuff. Like, deep submarine eruptions that produce uh, like giant pumices and pumice wraps and stuff that make it all the way up to the surface. Like that there's that much gas like bubbling out of them. To, they can make pumice underwater, floats to the top. And that's actually how you discover these submarine eruptions is by spotting um, the pumice rafts in satellite imagery or, you know, people, uh, uh, you know, passengers sitting in a plane looking out over the ocean and happen happening to spot one. So. That's really cool. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So we think that. Oh, looks like we've got a sea cucumber in front of us. So yeah, we think that the pumices from uh, that we're seeing around here every now and again, uh, since, since it's kind of hard to uh, uh, like translate things across the equator because of that Coriolis effect we were talking about on a previous mm -hmm. watch. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. our, our best guess is that the pumices may have come from like the Aleutian Arc uh, north of us or the Marianas um, over in the north, uh, mostly west. Oh, wow. So um, that means that these pumices, and even if they came from somewhere else, regardless of where they've come from, they've traveled a very long way. And they came to rest here. Hello, my name is Kai A deep sea traveler indeed. Indeed. What's this? Anemone. Anemone, okay. I'm just like kind of, <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't trust my judgment anymore. <laughs> You've done well. I'm trying. On previous, previous shifts. Yeah. Well, okay, that, uh, okay, that's Cleric Tinian. 
Oh yeah, no. I, I would not. I would. I, that 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 that's like a, that's like the kind of curveball question that uh, the professors give you during uh, uh, your proposal defense. Okay, maybe not always, but some sometimes that happens. <laughs> Just looking at Virginia's reaction to that, and she's like, uh, no. <laughs> Not the actual dissertation defense, but the, uh, uh, you know, sometimes professors like to throw the little uh, curveballs at you and uh, give you something unique to look at and ask you, and, and they kind of want to see you sit down and see how you think through figuring out what it is they're, uh, they're giving you to identify. Mm. You know, they're not necessarily interested in a right or wrong answer. They're interested in uh, the process you're using to get there. Yeah, it looks like we've got uh, another one of those tall sponges that we saw earlier and some of those uh, primnoids, which uh, Asako helpfully, um, uh, yeah, uh, say uh, it might be Norella. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So is this more of a sheet flow I'm uh, looking at now? It seems yeah. like it. Yeah, low bait to sheet flow. I'm still seeing some hummocks in it, so mm -hmm. we might still be in like uh, low bait territory. You know, it's hard to tell with just how encrusted everything is, too. Mm, yes. It's a lot easier to tell in younger places, <laughs> like when where the lava has erupted geologically, like yesterday. Ah. So we're we're kind of, we're kind of on hard mode here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that could be Norella. Ooh, and another floating thing. <laughs> cool. Yeah. What is that? The floating thing? I think it's a worm. Okay. I, I'm mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's not the same worm that we were seeing earlier. I don't think. I don't see the uh, uh, the legs on it. Could be the zoom. Could be that we're not able to see the legs. Yeah, um, maybe. But it it might have them. I don't know. It might be a very tiny larvaceous organism, maybe. Ooh. I feel like it's translucent. This little eel, eel friend up in the camera too. It's fast. <laughs> yeah, it's thanks fast. for the peek at that. Yeah, thank you. Can move on. If you are good. Yeah, fantastic. Our uh, continue our trek to the final waypoint. Oh, looks like we've got a fish in Atalanta's view, too. Mm. I think that... Mm, no, I lied. You didn't say anything, so you didn't lie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, it's a little know. yellow stock yeah, sponge. Oh, and an urchin. And a little urchin. urchin. Oh. It's oh, a baby bolosoma. Oh yeah, that is kind of
socorro. Stolens? I don't know, it looks like sediment and maybe some... Yeah, uh, yeah it looks more like sediment to me, but I could be wrong. Maybe some lineations in there, but yeah, could also just be sediment. No, that's got to be something. Oh. <laughs> Asako's excited. Ooh, what have we? They're all retracted. Yeah, it looks like maybe some... Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah I think that's stolen, stolen inference. inference. Yeah. Dead stolen inference? Unknown. Uh, those have polyps out. Oh yeah, some of them do seem to have polyps. Um, these look different from the green ones that we sampled a couple of dives ago. They do. They have a very, um, if, if those ones do have their polyps out, they do have a very different, um, like, polyp shape to them. Yeah, they're, they're a lot smaller and skinnier, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they have a much um, smaller uh, tube type situation. Uh, Sako's asking if maybe we saw some zoanthid. Here? Yeah. Like these are zoanthids and not um, um, stolen inference? Uh, I, th I think we're seeing stolen inference, but she was wondering if we saw some zoanthids among them. I don't think I saw. But um, um, I'm not getting I'm a good look at the, the polyps, to be honest. Okay. Um, I mean, because most of them aren't out, or they, yeah. you know, so it's kind of hard to tell. Um, they're connected. Oh. Some might be not yeah. octocorals. They might yeah, have. Yeah, I'm. I'm having a. That's that's sort of what I'm having a hard time seeing though. Is the um, the, the arms on the polyps? Yeah. Amber, would it be possible to pan back up and I think a little to the left, please? Um. Where are we trying to look? Um, we're trying to find some of these corals that have the, uh, presumed corals that have the uh, polyps out. And I think there are some a little higher up. I don't know exactly yeah, where. And they're not very big, so if we, if we yeah. look far out, we're not going to be able to zoom in enough. Yeah, this is max zoom here. No worries. Is that full zoom? It is. <laughs> These are little things. Yeah. Yeah, I think if we pan up, we might uh, see them again. Let's see. Oh, where did they go? I'm seeing some white specks on the on the sides of some of them. Yeah. Like on the side of like There's maybe the one with face. its polyps out right there. Um. Ah, tricky. Yeah, sorry, I just got him to hold position, but it might be too late. Uh, just let us know if we need to move. Yeah, we can go. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not going to be able to get a closer look at them. That's, that's okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah, we may have to go back to the footage later. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is interesting, though. So I think most of, except for those kind of green yellow ones that we uh, sampled, I don't think we've seen anything that color in the stolen inference uh, category. Usually they're kind of they're kind of whiter, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Hmm. 
So I just got a um, notification from the bridge that he's having a little issue with the jet pump, which okay. I think happened earlier today. So we may just have a s to, well, we have a bit to catch up anyway. Okay. Yeah, let's I'll, let's I'll let get caught up and stay above ground for now. Mm -hmm. So we'll just cover a little territory and uh, that way they can get things sorted out. Do a little bit of a flyby. Some interesting topography here. Yeah. Pillows? Yes. Aha. Look at me learning geology. Hey. Yes, ah. Look at this. We're exchanging knowledge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if this is not too far away from a vent because we are we are just coming off of a, a local bathymetric high and. Uh, now, by vent, you mean uh, like a side vent of the volcano? Um, in this case, uh, the vent's where uh, the lava is going to come out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We are very near the high point. There's just these smaller, what do look like sort of vents, you know, little pock marks that are mm -hmm. dotting the summit, the, the broader summit of this. And yeah, some little cones. Yeah. Just about a mile below the surface, 1,600 meters. Now that does not look like a polyopagon, but it is a pretty big sponge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So does that count as a stock sponge? Or is that um, too wide a base? You know, I've been noticing, I think stock sponge are very, they have a very, they have a taller stock yeah. and it's thinner. Um, so it's always going to be those skinny, sort of stem-like? I believe so, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's always kind of interesting to see where some of these definitions, uh, uh, you know, just how tight some of these definitions yeah. are. Because, like, you know, what, what actually counts as a stock well, and uh, also, do, I mean, uh, we're we're going off of a, s a single animal guide, right? You know? yeah. I would I would imagine, um, you know, a, a sponge biologist would have more of an opinion, right, um, than I do here. Yeah, because I know that's the kind of getting into the nuance of the topic too. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, nuance can be where we get in trouble as scientists. Yeah. <laughs> so no worries. Mm -hmm. Oh, look oh, at this that! This is interesting. That's beautiful. Yeah, I think that might have been a polyopagon. Yeah. Okay. I think one of, I was reading the, the chat, and one of the, I think the defining characteristics of a polyopagon is like that one concave side that they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, another green thing. Oh, oh yeah, this is interesting. Dog. I think this might be a old sponge base that is currently hosting a large family of opioids. Oh, and a shrimp. Mm. Yeah, I love this. Oh, there are a couple of, a couple of lobsters in there. Yeah. Everybody's just hanging out. Mm -hmm. Ah, another one of those bolosomas. Mm -hmm. It does look like a bolosoma. Sweet. Very much so. With the a very clearly defined stock. Yes, very yes. clearly defined stock. And this one, the stock is coming from uh, directly below it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is also a defining characteristic of uh, the bolosomas. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, 
Looks and it looks like, like we've got some small, oh, we've oh. got a fish. Oh. Good eye. Oh, it's a chimera. Oh, Can cool. you turn the lasers off? Oh, no. Okay. Oh, wow. These are some of my favorites. Do we know why they're called chimeras? Um, you know, I, I do not actually. Okay. So it looks like it's translucent almost, is it? Um, I don't know. No, it's not translucent. Okay, it's, um, it's just an optical illusion then. Yeah. And actually, you know, I, I think a chimera is, is not entirely the correct name um there it's just a group of um uh it's what comes to mind first um okay to my mind first at least um but yeah no they're uh oh okay but the guide guy does say that they're a larger group Ooh. oh god got shocked um maybe got spooked um, they're so striking. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it might be a chimera. Um, there's some, they're extremely interesting. Um, sorry, I'm getting some. No, some that's okay. Shots. Got grab. a good angle. They are absolutely stunning. They do have really large eyes. Um, yeah, they're really cool. Some of some exceptional, one of the exceptional organisms here in the deep sea. Yeah, so they um, they are uh, <clears throat> so they're also called rabbit fish or rat fish. Um, uh, and they are cartilaginous. Okay, so kind of like sharks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, actually, um, but 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 also not sharks. Um, right. So, but, uh, but, I was just know. talking about the the cartil cartilaginous. The cartilaginous. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's actually a, a large number of species of them. Um, and there's a couple genera, including Hydrolagus, which um, uh, is potentially the, the type of chimera that we saw here, um, which is interesting. Yeah, um, oh wow, it has a venomous spine in front of its dorsal fin. Wow. Oh yeah, no, they're, they're absolutely wild. Um, they are bottom feeders. Um, Hmm. Yeah, so just like opportunistic feeding then. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to give it a try, he said. Okay. Hopefully great. got it going again. Yeah, awesome. Thanks. Okie dokie.